Good morning, everybody. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I, I did, uh, uh, I think I talked to Jerry, I think it is, or, or somebody said they got about an eighth of an inch of rain the other day. Who was that? Was Jerry? Oh, it was Ralph. Ralph said something about an eighth of an inch. We did get a little bit, but we do need more rain, and uh, God knows where we need it, when we need it, how much we need of it. And, uh, and it's surely uh, he doesn't forget. So no. he knows where we're at. And um, But uh, looking at the forecast, uh, we did get a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, rain. And, uh, and it did cool that area down a little bit. Uh, if you say 80s, 80s to uh, what, 90s is the low. Uh, it's what it, what it is. is is the high. Yeah, so... Looks like uh, we did get a little bit of a cold front considering we were in triple digits, yes. We need to pray that rain on into the area. There's some Man. coming from Dallas, but they're thinking it's going to fall apart. Right. We need to pray that it all stays together and moves through East Texas. Texas. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do need to make sure uh, that we be specific about our prayers and God will definitely Man. understand uh, what we're trying to ask for and uh, and everything, and uh, we uh, we have, like I said, uh, been really, really hot here lately. You walk across the yard, and it sounds like you're walking across uh, some cornflakes or something. You know, just you know, uh, everything's burned up. You know, so I haven't had to worry about mowing here lately. You know, I don't know if you guys have, but I have. So, uh, but uh, pray that we get some more rain. Those uh, farmers out there that grow hay and stuff. I mean, hay has just gotten to where it's just outrageously priced now. And uh, it's because, you know, everywhere you go, uh, there's no rain. So we need to make sure we keep that in prayer as well. So uh, but praise God that he, he is uh, all-knowing and he's righteous to give us what we deserve and, and uh, when we deserve it. And so uh, we'll get rain soon, hopefully. Keep us in prayer, you know. Uh, this morning we're going to be in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 8, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Lord, I come to you this morning, Lord, as your humble servant. Lord, I ask that you would just use me as your vessel, Lord, that I may preach the words that you that would glorify you, Lord. And uh, Lord, that uh, each person here in the congregation would take something from this, Sir. Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would use this church to glorify your name, Lord, Sir. and uh, allow each one of us to go outside uh, these walls, Lord, these doors, and and stand fast and put on the whole armor of God and, and that way we might uh, uh, stand fast against the fiery darts of the darkness and principalities that are out there to, war, to wage war against us, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you be those that are on our prayer list, Lord, and uh, we have so many and we've, we've uh, taken some off them, but we keep continually having to add people to the, to the list, Lord. So we know that you... Uh, righteous God, and you are the God of healing and uh, the God of all power, Lord. We ask that you would just uh, take into consideration these that we put on to the prayer list, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would just bless us with some rain, Lord. So we yes. ask that you would just uh, put that rain all around us, Lord. We just like Brother Rick mentioned just a few minutes ago sure. that the rain coming from Dallas area, Lord, would not break up but just continue on. Uh, through our area, Lord, and uh, give us a good soaking rain, Lord. And Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Again, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, we're in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. One of the smallest uh, verses, uh, I think, that, uh, and you know, I used to uh, read through and I, you know, pick out verses that I knew that I, I wanted to to memorize and I wanted to them to mean something to me but this one should resonate in each of us today because uh, uh, Christ never changes does he? 
never changes. The Bible tells us that, that He never changes. It says, uh, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now we change because we live in an ever-changing world, right? The principalities that are out there, the darkness of this world, uh, the Bible tells us that not one of us, not one of us are good. Every day we hear something different on the news. You know, we have uh, the uh, presidential race starting to, you know, where all the candidates are starting to get out there amongst the states and starting to uh, throw their pitches out there to everybody so that they can either get uh, voted in uh, off as a president. You know, not many of them that are out there are talking about God first, country second, family third. You don't hear that, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have taken a, a, a look at what's going on in this world today. Uh, certainly things are not the same as they were 50 to 100 years ago. Amen. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we can uh, sit there and we can know that uh, <clears throat> know that uh, every day everything changes around us but God never changes sure. uh, since the world is broken it's full of uh, full of sin mm -hmm. you know uh, since every day we hear something different on the news the songs that we that we grew up with I know I, I have a few of you that are in here that are from mine and Mary's era the songs that we listened to when we were growing up uh, our kids don't don't know you know, they have, uh, we have these celebrities out there that are singing these songs uh, and they're doing this, uh, this movement now, it seems about to persecute Christians. You know, uh, I saw on the news not too long ago uh, and on a video uh, on uh, Facebook where this uh, young lady had posted it and it showed that uh, some of the most uh, looked after uh, celebrities are now uh, mocking God on stage. Had one rapper was uh, like showing him that he was on a cross and he had an up down, upside down cross on his chest and we see uh, Elon Musk the other day, I think I mentioned something about him wearing uh, the Devil's Champions uh, costume to a uh, Halloween party. These people out there, these young kids out there, they look up to these celebrities and they're listening to their music and they're being persuaded by these celebrities who talk anti-God. They're going to these colleges and speaking to these professors and the professors are preaching anti-God. These schools are letting transgenders go in and dance in front of little kids. Sixth grade and below. Anti-God. It's happening all around us. Did you know that the average smartphone or the average phone user checks Facebook 14 times a day? They check uh, 14 times a day. And that's just one social media platform. We have Facebook, we have what, TikTok, and we have, uh, what are some of the other ones? Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Instagram. Yes. You know. And uh, we see all these posts. These kids out there nowadays. You know, we talked about it this morning and uh, a little bit this morning in Sunday school. Uh, being influenced <coughs> by these celebrities and being influenced by the world out there. The, the way things are going the way people talk, the way they act towards each other. God says we're supposed to love thy neighbor as thyself. That's not happening anymore. 
our neighbor and those that we come in contact with, not just the people that live next door to us. It says more TV shows are being watched now instead of uh, going to the movies. Music is now streamed and not downloaded. People never really leave the office anymore because of what? The technology's right there. The computer's right there. People text more than they actually talk to each other. I noticed that the other day when we went to Mama's, you know, uh, we sit down there and we eat and we conversate. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm always, I'm always looking around. My OPSEC uh, is just off the chart. And so I'm looking around and I see people all the time. And they're right across from their partner, from their husband or their boyfriend or girlfriend, and they're extending on their phones. You should not be that way. You used to be able to talk to one another. Families used to come and break bread and pray, you know, asking God to bless the food at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. You know? And now you have the kids telling the parents what to do. And the kids telling the teachers what to do. You know? It says couples now meet each other through dating apps and then one uh, when it comes to matters of the heart. Parents spend less time with their children, according to the research in 2018, perhaps spend about 37 minutes of quality time with their children a day. It's quality time. It doesn't mean that they're not with their children. It's quality time with their children. Quality time with their children. No longer happen. Everything is Google nowadays. Big tech and policies have us in their hip pocket. Do they not? These big tech companies, they have it going on. These big churches, they have the light shows and stuff like that. But God never changes. It says right here, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was light, and the light was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. In other words, those out there that are not Christians, they don't comprehend the Word of God. How can they? They haven't accepted Him as their Lord Jesus Christ, as their Savior. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, And then without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. And He sits at the right hand of the Father right now making intercession for you and I. Amen. Amen. That's right. Everything that we do, everything that we say, mm -hmm. do you know is being written down? Everything that we do, everything that we say is being written down. When I worked over there at uh, New Hope Energy, I would hear people, even though they knew I was a pastor, I had people come up to me and try to tell me dirty jokes. You know what I tell them? Look, I ain't all into that. I don't want to hear that. You know, if it's not clean, I don't want to hear it. Why? Because when you put yourself in that position, and when you put yourself in that category, guess what's going to happen? The world is going to say, oh, okay, he's right along with me. The next thing you know, somebody is cussing. Next thing you know, you get mad, hit your finger, and guess what comes out of your mouth? Yeah. Profanity. The Bible talks about it. Bible says 
that the Lord Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father and He makes intercession for us. Also says that no man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ left heaven, came down, died on the cross, crucifixion on a Roman cross, one of the most cruciating, painful things that could happen to a person. Bled and died, and with his last breath, he said what? It is finished. He was buried in the tomb three days later, rose again. Amen. And is now, again, sitting at the right hand Amen. of the Father. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Notice that word right there. Still sinners. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. And you know, this is what gets me. All of us men out there, we're supposed to be the head of our household. Do you know that when you read the Bible there in Genesis where it talks about Eve being deceived by the serpent, do you know when you read down there, it says that Eve ate but do you notice after Eve ate, nothing happened until after Adam ate. When Adam ate, then what happened? Their eyes were open to sin. When Eve ate, nothing happened until Adam partook. When Adam, when she gave it to Adam and Adam partook, that's when it happened. Why? Because Adam was supposed to be there to tell the, to tell the serpent, get away. He was supposed to be leading his life. But instead, what did he do? Told God, this woman that you gave me, she gave it to me and I ate God never changes. He is a righteous God, a loving God who is deserving of worship and praise each and every day. Like I said this morning when I got up, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that I had another breath that I could come here and preach His Word and stand, and stand fast knowing that I know Jesus Christ. I have Him in my heart. Amen. And I know that when I pass away, when I take my last breath, that my Bible tells me to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I know where I'm going. John chapter 8 verse 58 says, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not He doesn't change, folks. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. That's right. Amen. He is not held to anything of this world. He is outside of this world. Now, the devil can use us. He can tempt us all day long. And you know if He'll tempt Jesus Christ, He'll tempt us. It happens every day. It happens every day. But even though we're nasty, filthy, undeserving of His love, it says, Jesus says there in John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. That for I am the Lord, I do not change. In Malachi verse 3, verse 6. Therefore you cannot, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. In the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, 
The very first verse says what? In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He is not held by His own creation. We're created in His image. Jesus says, if, he, if I am in you, you are in me, right? So we have the Lord Jesus Christ in us, the Holy Spirit. Does that mean we're not going to be tempted? No, he said what? They hated me first. So if you're doing good, guess what? Somebody's bound to be out there. They're going to have something against you. Doesn't matter. God doesn't change. You take your worries to Him. You don't take your worries to them. You lay your worries at His feet. You let Him take care of it. Why? Because He can do that. He is mightier. He says, I have overcome the earth and death. Right? He has overcome it. He can handle it. He's not, He says, in our weakness, He makes us strong. Yeah. He makes us strong. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. There's nothing out there that you're going through that He can't take care of. That's right, sir. He's got it. Mm -hmm. He says He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Almighty. There's nothing in your life that you're going through right now that He can't take care of. You just have to lay it at His feet. It can be money problems. It can be relationship problems. It can be drug problems. It can be alcohol problems. He can handle that. You just have to be obedient enough to give it over to Him and not take it back. We have that problem, don't we? I know I do. I'll be the first one to tell you. I give it to the Lord, and then halfway through the week when things are starting to go Jim's way, guess what I do? I got it, Lord. Won't you take that back seat right there? I got this. No. That ain't the way we do it. We gotta turn it over to him. Let him have it. True. He is stronger than us. He can handle it. True. He will take care of it for you. True. From time to time, our eyes are, uh, in, are open in the morning. Say from from the time we open our eyes in the morning, True. Satan's on us 24-7. He's gonna start from the very first moment that you get up in the morning. You can bet your bottom dollar that he's going to take advantage of it. He is going to take advantage of it. It might be the way your spouse looks at you. It might be the word that he or she says to you. It might be that. It doesn't matter. That toothbrush could have fell off and fell in the toilet. That's the only toothbrush you have. Guess what? That can make you so mad that it can ruin your whole day. Why? over a little piece of plastic with some brushes on the end that you can go and buy or you can get another one. Why let it ruin your day? You got Christ. You're breathing. You're able to make a difference in someone else's life. You're able to do God's work. You're able to tell someone else the good news, what God has done for you. Your testimony is the most powerful thing that we have. Your testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ is the most powerful, powerful weapon we have. When times are hard, you need to find a, a friend, call your mom, your dad. Recognize the tendency of the sin. To recognize means to identify, acknowledge ex the existence, the validity, or the legitimacy of what's going on in your life. Once you do that, once you recognize.
exercise that, then you can fully hand it over to God. Mm -hmm. It's like we just talked about a few minutes ago about praying for rain, being specific about praying for rain. We have to be specific, and I almost messed it up there, Brother Rick. I almost said, you know, this is the yeah. ass. We have to be specific about what we're praying for. Correct. We have to have that relationship. That relationship is not between me and Brother Rick and God, me and Jackie and Terry and God. That relationship is between me and God. No. He wants that personal relationship between you and Him. Amen. Amen. That's right. You and Him. He says He is our Father. Mm -hmm. We should be able to go to Him like our sure. Father. We should be able to talk to Him every day with every concern we might have. We have to flee from temptation. Flee from means run away from a place or a situation or danger. We have to resist temptation with the word of truth. Resist means withstand the action or effect of. That is the, one of the hardest things to do, isn't it? To resist temptation. Why? Because the world's going to make it look so good. You know? If you've got that eating disorder like I do, and there's a piece of cheesecake sitting there. It's got that cherry on top, that little drizzle, you know, the one I'm talking about. If you do shake your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. To resist that is very, very hard when you're trying to lose some weight to look good in your uniform. Right? Resist. Refocus your mind and heart with praise. Re refocus means to state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. We have to refocus on this. The Word of God. Because again, what's he say? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Almighty. He can handle it. Whatever it is you're going through, he can handle it. And we have to repent quickly when we fail. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I, qu I fail quite often. Biblically, repentance means responding to God's love by being transformed in your convictions and actions. It means turning towards God and away from what of, whatever is dishonoring Him. So whatever it is that you've done, whatever it is, for then you should get that feeling that this is wrong. This is not what God wants me to do. I'm a child of God and I am supposed to repent. Turn away from it. Leave it all behind. Give it to Him. <clears throat> Why? Because it dishonors Him. It dishonors him. God says, What? If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Amen. Amen. That's right. You will obey my, our, our commandments. That's right. Remember, God doesn't change. God doesn't change. Hebrews 13 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change, folks. That's right. Whatever it is you're going through today, whether it's, like I said, money problems, relationship problems, alcohol problems, drug problems, it doesn't matter. Nothing is too complicated for Jesus Christ. He will take care of it. Just got to give it to Him. It's the hardest thing to do is to to resist the world because the world paints a pretty good picture. But Jesus Christ doesn't change. We change because the world around us is changing. If you think this world out there right now is going to stop for you, you've got another thing coming. But we have to stand fast. We have to put on the whole armor of God. Okay. And we have to tell people, look, I'm not doing that. Why? Because it dishonors God. Okay. It's not what my Bible tells me. And if they don't want to be your friend or if they don't want to
want to be around you, guess what? Let them go. <coughs> Tell them. I will pray that God opens your eyes to the sin that's happening around you. It's like we talked about in uh, Sunday school this morning when the prophet Elisha specifically prayed mm. that God would open the eyes of his servants so that he could see the fiery chariots around were more than the Syrians. Right? Mm -hmm. We have to specifically pray for what right. we want and what we need. And God hears us. Jesus says what? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. He's right. the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. That's right. Amen. Brother Ralph, we're going to have a hymn, uh, hymn of invitation. Uh, Brother Ralph is going to come up here and we're going to sing a, a hymn of invitation. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, then today is your day. Don't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow may not come. Yeah. Tomorrow may not come. Mm -hmm. Hymn number 282, Living for Jesus. 282. Amen. Living for yes, Jesus. <clears throat>